Hello and Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland, and this is Greg Stevens, and this is The Class, and this is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Praise God. So, it's Christmas. Yes, it is. Mm. Mm -hmm. And 2023 is in the rear view mirror. <laughs> Whatever you uh, need to get done, you better get it done early. <laughs> I always look forward to it because this ministry began in January, January the 24th in 1967. So anyway, that just means I've been at it a while. But in studying Christmas, and the fact that God, in the beginning, God, no, in the beginning, Elohim, plural. Let us make man. So, anyway, everything And the, 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 the first covenants has been called the Old Testament or the Old Covenant, but just study it. In fact, the English translators, I, I think, really, I think they were trying to get over the fact that this is a testament, it's a will and testament, mm -hmm. that it is absolute, the absolute truth. But they missed the fact that it's blood covenants but you have to go inward into the text to find that. But then that's what it's all about. And the timing is impeccable. Jesus said, only the Father knows. He's the only one that knows when it'll happen. Mm -hmm. But then he said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all nations as a witness. Then the end shall come. And now we have the technology to do that. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. And uh, well, before we get through, we'll talk some more about that. But now, <laughs> let's talk about Nazareth. They came in because it was that it might be fulfilled yes. Yes. because he'd be called a Nazarene. Mm -hmm. So that's why they went to Nazareth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Nazareth. From Rick Renner's um, study, the village of Nazareth Scripture tells us the angel Gabriel came to Mary. She was living in Galilee in a very obscure town called Nazareth. Although Nazareth is named in the New Testament, very little is known about it from ancient sources. It was such a small agricultural village that archeological research concludes that in Jesus' time, no more than 120 to 150 people ever lived there. Well, he was raised there. Everybody knew the whole family. They who knew he was a very nice boy. But then he went back to his own hometown. And they said, we know, we know him. In other words, how could he be how can he fulfill these scriptures? Because he sat there and told him he's Messiah. I am anointed. God has anointed me. So that, that's what he told him right there. He began to preach. They just infuriated the whole bunch. Who does he think he is? <laughs> he knew exactly who he was. And how did he find it out? through the different scriptures, he found himself in the book of Isaiah. And that day he quoted the book of Isaiah from the 61st chapter. So, <laughs> Well, Nazareth is quoted in there. The Hebrew root, root is nitzer, means yes. a, a root or a branch. Yes. And so 
even Isaiah is quoting the city where he's going to read Isaiah That's right. to them. So it, it had to work that way. And um, now, <laughs> Nazareth is derived, as, uh, as Greg said, from the Hebrew word Netzer, a word that means a shoot or a branch. Isaiah 11.1, 1, Isaiah gave a messianic prophecy and said, a shoot will spring up from the stem of Jesse yeah. and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. So whether we know it or not, or whether we understand it or not, every jot and tittle, yes, sir. we would say, dotted every I and crossed, crossed every, every T. Every word of it. And we are blessed to have copies of it in several translations. <laughs> we can check it out in different ways. And so, now this, the, the word branch in this verse, Netzer, Nazareth called place where a branch, hang on. of David lived, referring to a branch of David's family in 100 BC, one clan from the little, the line of David did move there. So Nazareth did indeed become home to one branch of David's line. <laughs> oh, isn't this good? It is good. I tell you, it's just so rich. Luke 2, 4, Joseph was of the house and lineage of David. Gabriel stated that Christ would be born of a virgin which no male involvement, that her divine offspring would be given to the throne of the father of David. Now, he did a lot of research on Mary, where she went to school, her parents, and I've heard people say, well, his parents were obviously poor. No, they were not. She came from a wealthy family. And Rick names her, her, her father and her mother, where she came from and where she was schooled. I wish I had. But thank God for Rick. <laughs> yeah, both, both, sides of the, both sides of Jesus' family, mother's side and father's side, come from David. Mm -hmm. um, but they're two different sides of the tree. And maybe That's we'll get into this next week. <laughs> this is how we had to have a virgin birth. Yes. It, it's required and how God got around a trap Satan had tried to lay. Yeah. He, Satan can't ever win. But God got around it through Mary, through a virgin birth. And so we'll, we'll talk that about so that next week during that Christmas. so cool. <laughs> but you're right. They were influ she, she was from an influential family. Her cousin is married to who should have been the high priest in their day. What we talked about last time in, in Luke, Zacharias. Um, so... She's married to a Levite, although she's from Judah. And it will be important for Mary to marry in Judah. Where in, <laughs> I'll set it up. <laughs> It'll be important. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now then, here are some, some powerful words. Um, Let's, let's talk about here in, in the book of Luke, in that first chapter there. And, well, yeah, thank you, Lord, I'll do that. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order to declaration of these things, they're um, excellent Theopolis. Acts, now, Acts chapter one. Acts chapter one. The former treaty have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus be began to both do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Mm -hmm. So th this is very extensive research on his part. I mean, it, and he, I, mm, he traveled with Paul and like we said, there's, you, you have to know the different languages that the man spoke 
in order to interview all these people. So, because a whole lot of them were not bilingual. So he spoke Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic. Most likely Latin. Yeah, oh, well, Romans. yes. Listen, he's traveling with Paul. Paul's one of the most educated rabbis of all time. Yes. <laughs> he's not gonna have, I was gonna say, you're not gonna have some dummy traveling with him, <laughs> writing stuff down. He, he, was, he was traveling with him, and this was a man to whom the apostle Paul would reveal things mm -hmm. that they could sit and discuss these things together and they could travel together and go into different parts of the world and speak whatever language was there when they went to Malta. Of course, when they were there, they had to have interpreters there. What a magnificent book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> I had somebody ask me, why do you have so many notes when you go into Billy Copeland? You have tons of verses and notes. I said, because I'm setting with Kenneth Copeland. <laughs> Luke, Luke would have, Theophilus, they would have been ready with a bunch of stuff <laughs> setting with Paul. I know what it feels like. <laughs> now, we see all of this. We talked about Nazareth. What about the city of Sephoris? Is that the way you pronounce it? Yeah, Sephoris. Greek city. What do you know about that city? Did you ever hear of it before? No. <laughs> it is interesting that Christian tour groups almost always include Nazareth in their itinerary, but hardly ever mention the ruins of Sepphoris, which lie less than four miles away. Yet Sepphoris was the capital of Galilee and so sophisticated as a city that the historian Josephus referred to it as the jewel of Galilee or the ornament of Galilee. The reason I mention Sepphoris is that it plays an important role in this story. So let's see what we know about the city of Sepphoris and what relationship to Nazareth and how it played a role in the, in the account of Jesus' birth. And he goes to talk about the Sepphoris, the capital of the northern district of Galilee, so importantly that it principal seat of power in Jewish uh, Sanhedrin and so forth. Four miles from Nazareth. Mm -hmm. That's right. And it was a city sitting on a hill. Very modern. Would have had all the columns that you expect to see in Greece. And lights. I'll always be lit up. Where have we heard that? A shining city. Sit on a hill. On a hill. Set for us. That's what I said. <laughs> wow. Whoa. And the conquest of Pompeii, Herod the Great, and, and so forth and so on. So the reason this is so important is like what Rick said. This is the rest of the story. And the, all of the pieces come together. So, and uh, <clears throat> this copy of mine that Rick gave me, this was the first copy and uh, so now from now on, I teach my children and grandchildren and all at Christmas out of this book. There were 10 cities in the time of Jesus in the first century called the cities of the Decapolis. Mm -hmm. You read it in your New Testament. Mm -hmm. They're largely Greek or Latin cities. Well, the, 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 um, the madman who had the, the legion of demons, he's from that region. And so they, the Jews don't have a whole lot to do with them, but they're, they're there are Jews there, but they're what we call Hellenistic Jews. In other words, they've, they've been influenced by Greek culture. Um, many of them took Greek names, James, you know, uh, Mark, different names that are Greek rather than Hebrew. And, uh, but, there, but a lot of people are Jewish that live there, but they're very sophisticated, largely very wealthy cities. 
with bathhouses and amphitheaters, and you can go. Uh, Bet Shean is one of those. You can tour the ruins of those places now. But Jesus ministered all along there. The Greeks were ready to receive him at one point because they saw miracles and things happen. And so this city is one of those cities. Tiberius would have been another one. That's so another one. You'll, you'll get little <clears throat> hints of this. Caesarea Philippi, where he says, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So there were Greek temples in all of these places. It's not a place that Jesus would have lived, but it's a place that his father would have done work. Mm -hmm. It's a place they would have <clears throat> gone to from time to time. It's a place he definitely saw. And from Rick the brings distance. out the fact that the, the word translated carpenter mm -hmm. is also the word for technology. Mm -hmm. So he could have been an architect as well as, mm -hmm. as, a, as a carpenter. And so, did he, uh, did he help build that city? Likely. It's likely. Yeah, it's likely. And they had arches, and they had columns, and they had frescoes, and they had running water, and they had sewage systems, and they had steam rooms and bathhouses. These were, this was not, <laughs> this was not cavemen. That's right. <laughs> and uh, so, the that, only part about this, the only one was a caveman. Jesus was born in a cave. Mm -hmm. And it, that though those caves were hollowed out places, very large. And the shepherds protected their sheep inside those caves. That's right. And, uh, and, and so that Jesus was born there. In Judea, when Rome destroys Jerusalem and Israel in 70 AD, beginning about 66 to 70 AD, the Israelis will run and they'll run to the caves mm -hmm. in the Judean wilderness, how we get the Dead Sea Scrolls from Qumran. Mm -hmm. So they would, they're used to running right. into That's the Judean. That's where they hid, hidden. Yes, sir. In, in those caves. In the Judean caves. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly where he was born, in one of those shepherd's caves. David knew all about them. Well, sure he hid he from did. Saul in them. So we, yesterday we mentioned, I'll touch briefly on this in, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter one, verse five, we were talking about Zacharias. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's the, go. The, let's a go. certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous. That phrase of the course of Abiah is critical. When you understand that phrase. Now, where are you now? I'm in, I'm in Luke chapter one, verse five. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, verse five. Oh, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. The priesthood rotated, mm -hmm. Brother Copeland, class, the priesthood rotated. And I can't remember if there were eight or nine courses, you would, how many courses there were, but they would rotate and do a week at the temple and then they would go back to the Galilee or back to wherever they lived and, and work as a priest there. But they would rotate. High priests stayed the same. But the priests working in the temple would rotate and they, they were on a rotation basis. Now, Josephus and other historians in 70 AD when the temple was destroyed tells us what course was on duty when the temple was destroyed. So if we know what course that was, we can do the math backwards and find out when Zacharias would have been working in the temple mm -hmm. and when this all happened. And so by doing the math, I can figure out pretty close when John and Jesus were both born. So Mary would have conceived. John, we know, is full term. Scripture tells us Jesus is full term. When the fullness of time had come, he was born. And God had to move on Caesar to move them out of Nazareth and get them down to Bethlehem. That's right. Because it had to be fulfilled. Because it had to be fulfilled what Michael the prophet had said. That's exactly right. So when we talk about this, we, we now know that Mary would have conceived during the Feast of Dedication. Now what one is that? Well, that happens to be what we know now as Hanukkah. 
she would have conceived by the Lord during the Feast of Dedication, meaning he would have been born probably then in September mm -hmm. after that. So that's also the Festival of Lights. So the light of the world was conceived in woman during the Festival of Lights and the Dedication. This is why she would have gone to the temple. <laughs> the probability odds of one man fulfilling over 300 prophecies in a 33-year time span, mm -hmm. it's not calculable. Well, not only him, but it had to be a certain man, mm -hmm. a certain woman, that the planning of it was before the foundation of the world. Amen. He had it all put together. And, and we know that from the plural creation of the world. That's right. When that angel came to Zacharias that day in Luke chapter one, that's the first angelic visit in the new covenant. Yes. Very first time. And it's so serious, he shuts his mouth. Yes. Yeah, well, he had to. So here we've got, a, we've got a barren couple like Abraham and Sarah. So we're repeating. We have a pattern happening. Mm -hmm. And this priest, he's offering the sacrifices. He's doing all this stuff. And that's when the angel approached him while he was tending the table of incense. That's when the, priest, that's when the angel approached him. It says that they were blameless. They had prayed for a child. Now, he didn't laugh, but he doesn't fully believe. Yeah. So this is why the angel the angel shut his mouth, and that's new covenant, guys. Yes, yeah, sir. Don't think that because <laughs> he he can't grade on the curve, brother. Couple, he's on a timeline. He doesn't have time to mess with this. We don't have twenty five years for you to be fully. It persuaded. has to be the accurate to the second. So he had to close his mouth, and then as you follow through it, and and we'll get there before it's over. He lost his hearing too. And uh, when I saw that, I, th I thought, I, I, I haven't decided in my spirit yet why that took place. But I expect, we know it's his fault. And uh, anyway, but we see that that, that, that happened. The angel answered, he said, I am Gabriel. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, yeah. show the messenger, an archangel of God, the messenger angel, the same one that came to Daniel. The very same, the messenger angel. And it's very interesting what happened there in that. Maybe we'll touch that before this week is over with. Anyway, I am Gabriel. Boy, I can, just, I can just hear him. Don't you know? He's standing there looking at him, and he didn't say that politely. No, he didn't. No, he did not. He said that forcefully. Now, he spoke to Mary. And again, how do we know all this? Because Luke right. interviewed Mary right. at Ephesus. Amen. Amen. I like this. He gave him his assignment too in verse 15 of chapter yes. one. This is Gabriel talking again. He says, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. God called him to be a Nazarite, Nazarite vow. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. I mean, Gabriel gave him his assignment right there to, to the priest. That priest should have known everything about it. There should have been, be it unto me like it was with Mary. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. But he was an old man. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what am I going to tell Elizabeth? <laughs> well, he even says that in verse 8. I'm an old man. Yeah. <laughs> That's his confession. She's not going to believe me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that that's what he said. But we're out of time anyway. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We'll be back in just a few moments. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. I wonder what Jesus' birth was really like. Why did God choose Mary and Joseph to be his parents? Were they really poor, like I was always taught? 
dive deep into the account of the Nativity with Rick Renner's book, Christmas, The Rest of the Story, and find out there is more to Jesus' birth than you ever knew. Using his knowledge of the Greek language along with historical and archaeological records, Rick Renner will take you on an exciting journey through the Christmas scriptures. Find out details like who the Magi really were and why the angels were so astonished at the Word made flesh. This beautifully illustrated and well-researched book will bring the Christmas story to life for you and your family. The discussion questions at the end of each chapter will help your family create a Christmas tradition of learning together. Ultimately, Christmas, the rest of the story, will point you to the purpose of the Nativity, the death and resurrection of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. This Christmas season, let the story of Jesus' birth open your eyes to God's amazing plan. Order Rick Renner's new book, Christmas, the rest of the story, for $29.99 on our website, kcm.org slash TV special, or when you call 800-600-7395. This offer is good for 60 days. Outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office today. Oh, I know you're enjoying this. We are too. And I think you need to write, email Rick and Denise Renner and <laughs> That, that this is a must read, must own book. And so praise God for it. And we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, remember this, always remember that God loves you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And I'm, I'm, in, I'm charged in my spirit right now. Somebody is distraught and thinking about suicide, mm. all this pressure at this time, no money for your children. Listen, don't take your life, give it away. Give it to Jesus. Give it to him and he'll make something out of it. Pray. Listen, don't do that. That's not the end of anything. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray uh, right now. And I remind the person or people that are involved in that that God loves them and we love them. Yes and that Jesus is Lord, yes. and he'll receive you, praise yes. God, and your life will reserve. Yes. I know a man, very personally, had a shotgun in his mouth, ready to pull the trigger, and the telephone rang. That's all that stopped him. But he went on to a marvelous, marvelous life, and serving God to yet till this day. Hallelujah. Amen. The answer's on the way. Wait. The yes. answer's on the way. Yes. And we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, again, remember, God loves you and we love you. And Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Give him a praise.